in this chapter we shall be discussing about arithmetic that the computer uses till now whatever we have uh, discussed uh, related to the arithmetic operations or um, uh, any arithmetic instructions we only have considered values that are integer or uh, the register file that we have discussed where we have 32 32 bits registers all of those registers they can store only integer values so for example if i write uh, let's say an instruction uh, like this add register 10 register 11 and register 12 all these registers will carry integer values they can only operate on integer values or even if i write uh, add i 10 11 let's say 100 as you can see, uh, the offset value or the uh, constant value is 100 and all these registers 10 and 11, they are going to have an integer value. That means till now, whatever we have discussed are uh, of integer, integer values. So the, all the arithmetic operations are going to be integer arithmetic operations uh, till now. In this chapter, where we say arithmetic for the computers, we will be discussing integer values as well as floating point representation of values. We all know that when we would like to represent something uh, which is very small or which is very large, you need to uh, represent them in a floating point notation. So, we will be uh, looking at the ways of how we can represent them in floating point notation. So, in this chapter, we'll be uh, looking at the methods of representing number and how the computer uses those number when representing some data or information. Arithmetic for computers, uh, again, uh, operations, as I just said, that we, we have operations which is integer and then we have floating point. Integer operations are addition and they are in subtraction, multiplication, division, and then one other thing is overflow. We did not talk about or discuss about overflow till now, but we are, we are, we are going to do it uh, in this uh, chapter. What is overflow and how we can handle overflow. So, the arithmetic operation will be uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And then we have floating point representation or floating point real numbers we, we, uh, where representation and operation will be looked at. Okay. So, this is what we are going to see in this chapter. Integer addition, as you have, uh, as you can see in the example that seven plus uh, six, all uh, both of them are integer. So the result would be thirteen, which is also an integer. The this this addition, this is decimal addition. This part is decimal addition, and the equivalent binary addition is given in this diagram, where it is uh, shown the same uh, result, which is thirteen. Now overflow when overflow can occur the first point adding one positive with negative operand there will be no overflow for example let's say if, if we have a positive value and then we are adding with it one negative value then there will be no overflow it cannot have a, any overflow there so that that's fine so we'll, uh, we, we do not have to worry when this kind of scenario arises where we have one positive value and one negative value and we are performing addition uh, on, on those two values. So uh, the result will be positive because uh, this one is the bigger number. And but the next two point adding two positive operands that means we have scenario where we are adding two positive operands we can have overflow how when overflow occurs overflow occurs when we have more bits coming in then compared to the number of bits that we could accommodate so in a 32 bit register in a 32 bit register if we have value which is 33 bit then we will have an overflow and then in the sign bit if we have one where it should have been a zero that's called an overflow if we have zero where it should have been an one this is an overflow 
Similarly, when we are adding two negative operands, that means we are performing this, we are performing this, this kind of operation, we still can have overflow. Why? In the sign bit, we, since the, both the numbers are negative, so the sign should be negative. But because of the bit length that we have after the addition, we may have a zero in the sign bit that would indicate that the result is positive. But if we add two negative values, then the result cannot be positive. It will always be negative. So this is an example of overflow. In the previous slide, we have seen how overflow can occur in case of integer addition. In this slide, we will see is it possible to have overflow in case of integer subtraction. To do that, we have an example uh, which is 7 minus 6 and we can write it like this 7 plus minus 6. We have seen this, this form when we are dealing with ALU design. So, we all know the result would be a positive 1. We all know that from this, uh, this numbers uh, and the binary form of that addition is given here. So, we again we see we, we can see that the result is a positive one. Now, let us see uh, where we can have overflow in case of subtraction. Subtracting two positive or two negative operand no overflow. That means, if we have scenario like this, that means do two positive numbers will have no overflow or something like this, again we will have no overflow. So, we are all good here. Subtracting positive from negative operand, where negative value is the bigger one. So, what should be the result? The result should be negative, but if we have 0 in the sign bit, that means the result would indicate that it is a positive value. This is an overflow. Similarly, subtracting negative from a positive value. Here, positive is the bigger value. So, what should be the result? In case of this, the, the result should be positive. But for some reason, if we have 1 in the sign bit, then the result would show negative. That means this is an overflow, which means that similar to the binary, uh, similar to the integer addition, where we have seen that overflow can occur in case of integer subtraction, we can also see that the similar situation can uh, occur, that means the overflow can occur. Dealing with overflows, some languages like C, it ignores overflow, C ignores overflow. So, when MIS generates assembly code for uh, programs written in C, it uses unsigned instruction like addu, addu i and so on. In that way, it completely ignores the overflow. But other languages, for example, Ada, Fortran, they consider the overflow. They do not uh, ignore it. In those cases, uh, when MIS generates the assembly code for these languages where a overflow is considered, it uses signed operation like add, add i, sub, these are the instructions that consider the sign. So, when MIPS generates or uses these assembly instructions, what can happen? Overflow can occur. So, when overflow occurs, the system invokes an exception handler that deals with the overflow. But before that, the instruction that, that generates the overflow, the memory address of that instruction is saved in EPC register, which is exception program counter. From where? From program counter because we all know that all the instruction mem instructions memory address are in the program counter and from program counter system learns which instructions to execute or where should it look in the memory for instruction. Now, EPC now stores the memory address of the instruction that generates the uh, 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 overflow or the exception and next step is a jump uh, instruction is executed. Jump instruction is similar to procedure call. So, a jump instruction is executed and the pointer or the program goes to the uh, handler. That means except exception handler. So, exception handler handles the exception and overcomes it. And then 
the address that is stored in the epc register is transferred back to a register inside the register file let's say in register t0 which is inside the register file so now t0 has the memory address of the instruction that actually generates the overflow when that address is known then this address is transferred back to the program counter and the program executes this uh, that instruction that uh, that initially generated the overflow 